everyone. It's Chris Schubert at CNSG. Welcome back to another edition of The Zoom, where we zoom in on thought leaders in the channel today. Uh, as such, I have a wonderful guest for us this week, SVP and Channel Chief of GTT, Mr. Rob Westervelt. Rob, thank you for joining us today. Chris, thanks. Great, great to be here. Awesome. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, obviously you're the big cheese at a, uh, at a global channel company, but have, tell us a little bit about where you started and uh, what got you there and really what fires you up about working at GTT Town. Absolutely. So I, I started back in the mid nineties, so I'm definitely dating myself, but I started back in the mid nineties and, you know, I've been a lot with a couple of different companies, XO Communications, Broadview Networks. Then before I came to GTT, I was at a company called NTT, which is a global uh, Japanese phone company uh, where I actually built the channel there. So um, what excited me about GTT was um, the opportunity to, uh, to be able to compete more than I could at NTT. So pretty exciting. You know, that's interesting because you mentioned you worked at NTT, a company that was global. Um, and obviously GTT, and let's try to make sure I don't screw that up during this interview. Uh, GTT has always been fixated on in the channel as being the global company. You know, if you need a, a gig circuit in downtown Moscow, bam, you reach out to GTT. But you guys are really changing, have really changed your focus over the last couple of years through your acquisition strategy. Uh, tell me a little bit about what defines GTT today and, and what your sweet spot is. Sure. Um, I mean, as you said, we're not only global, we're domestic as well. So I think we compete as well domestically as we do globally. Um, our sweet spot is since we are a tier one ISP, the third largest in the world, which a lot of people don't know about, um, we can carry our own internet traffic. So we basically connect businesses around the world together and to any kind of cloud application they want. And whether that's through MPLS networks, DIA networks, or SD-WAN, which is definitely our sweet spot today, the majority of the deals that we're signing in the channel are, are SD-WAN and some of our larger ones are all just domestic. So we're, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions about GTT is that we are competitive domestically as we are internationally. And you mentioned SD-WAN, you know, for, for many carriers, uh, especially carriers that have the network that you do, uh, many of them have struggled to really become known as SD-WAN carriers. A lot of the SD-WAN business that we've seen has really been focused on pure play providers. So that's generally all they do, and, and that's where they've kind of cornered that market. GTT has been an exception for, for CNSG. Again, a lot of letters. Let's see if I screwed this up again. But uh, GT, it has been an exception for CNSG is that we have seen some significant SD-WAN deals as well as opportunities that are in the pipeline uh, through your organization. Uh, to what do you attribute that success? I think it's, it's, it's a couple, there's a couple of things. One is that we do managed services very well. You know, managed services is in our DNA and SD-WAN, when provided by our provider, is a managed service. Uh, so we can deploy it, we can manage it, we can, we can monitor it. Um, and being a tier one ISP, it gives us the ability to, to, um, to be able to control our own traffic. So as things are going more IP, moving away from MPLS networks, um, being a tier one ISP and controlling your own network gives you a better quality of service when you're going IP, which is really what SD-WAN is all about. So uh, let's delve in, if you will, a little bit on that network, because I do think that's a, a very unique differentiator for GTT. Now, everybody knows that over the, the last several years, you've been on a, an M&A shopping spree, kind of building that, that GTT network. And many SD-WAN providers will talk about having, you know, two pops, three pops, four pops, maybe seven, eight pops na nationwide. I'm sure GTT kind of looks at that and goes, eh, that's cute. Tell us a little bit about the tier one network that uh, your SD-WAN customers are, are or attaching onto? Sure. So we have over 600 pops nationwide. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. So, so we definitely have the presence. And one of the things that we're also doing is as we expand into different regions of the world, we actually open up new gateways uh, for our SD-WAN for the platform. So we're constantly opening up new gateways, new pops. Um, we recently opened up a pop in New Orleans, which we didn't have a pop uh, because we ran across a customer that was looking for a certain product and, and certain you know, preferentials that they needed to do. So didn't have a, a pop close enough. So we actually opened a pop for them. So the business case drove a pop being created in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is, so we're always opening up new pops. 
And obviously, those are your gateways for a high quality SD WAN solution, you know, low latency getting on there. And of course, you've always been known for your ability to do bandwidth services, aggregation services domestically, and of course, internationally as well. Um, kind of delving into the creation of S of GTT and the modern GTT, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the building of the network, but we've also talked about all those acquisitions. I think it's what's been very that downright amazing about GTT is the fact that you have been able to integrate so many different networks so quickly. And a lot of these guys weren't exactly tiny either. Um, can you tell us a little bit about you know, what has made that so successful for GTT and why you've been able to integrate so quickly? Sure. So, so we have our own homegrown platform called CMD. Every single, every single acquisition that we've done, which I believe is like some 34 over the last 10 years, um, are all integrated into one system. So whether, you, whether you're at any one of the companies that we acquired, including Interat, which is about an $800 million acquisition that we did about a, a year and a half ago, they're all integrated into the same system today. The great thing for that for a customer is that, you know, we've got one network. Uh, the network is all one. The knock is all one where, you know, you're opening a trouble ticket. Uh, everybody can see it. All the circuits are in there. All the inventory is in there. So when you're working off of one system, it gives you a huge advantage in the marketplace, especially from a customer service perspective. Um, there's a lot of our competitors that have different networks that are called blue, green, orange, and, and you know, they got a swivel chair back and forth when somebody calls in a trouble ticket, you know, they don't see them in the system. We don't have that problem. Our, our claim to fame of M&A activity is having one single system. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned a, a term that terrifies me when I hear it, swivel chair. Yeah, because I've, I've dealt with that one. And my other favorite was always legacy because legacy always, they, they <laughs> made, made, okay, so that's the old network, the, the network that of legends. I mean, what, what is that? So uh, kudos to you for being able to, uh, to, to pull that off. Now, let's kind of turn our, 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 our field to kind of the focus and the relationship that GTT and CNSG have. You know, obviously, we have, uh, you've got some great executives that we have longstanding relationships with, Michael Goff, Gene Elmore, and, and others that have really kind of driven a, a, a really strong bond with CNSG. But part of that is because those individuals are so focused on the channel. Uh, GTT obviously has a robust um, uh, wholesale business, a robust uh, direct channel. Where does, where does the indirect channel fit for GTT and, and where do you see it growing in the future? Yeah, I mean, so the channel has been been experiencing double digit revenue growth for the last three years, which is remarkable. Um, and most of the larger SD-WAN deals are all coming through the channel. So I think the channel really set the pace, even with the direct sales organization, showing that we could win these deals because, you know, most of the sub agents that we deal with as well as the masters, uh, you know, there's a there's a relationship there with the sub agent as being the trusted advisor. So we get to cut through a lot of that red tape of trying to get to the decision makers and, and win some of these deals. So I think the channel has been on a cutting edge of GTT and we're about 25% of the America's revenue today, which is substantial for a $2 billion company. Yeah. And of course, you know, all of our channel partners, you know, like love to hear that. They like to know that the channel is, is a big part of that organization and will continue. And, I, and with Michael, Gene, and the rest of the crew uh, taking care of us, I, I, I feel confident in that. Uh, so let's kind of turn it, look at a little bit at the solutions from GTT. You know, we've talked about the fact that you are a, an all-in-one carrier. But unlike uh, several of the other types of all-in-ones we've chatted with so far this year on the Zoom, you are a global carrier with your own tier one network and a uh, almost ludicrous number of pops uh, across the world today. Uh, tell us the story of, of how that's impacted a customer and what you've been able to do in, in our case study section here. Yeah, sure. I mean, so, so I think, the, you know, we, again, we're as competitive domestically as we are international. So if you look at international, you know, manufacturing firms are all looking for, you know, to be able to put, whether it's China or Indonesia or India, they're looking to put a presence in those, in those countries. And, and we obviously, with our global presence, can do that today. So there's no place we really can't go other than an embargoed, embargoed country. You know, we do, we do put SD-WAN devices in boxes in China, which is difficult to do, but we've got several customers that have, that have uh, SD-WAN pops or SD-WAN locations in China, I should say. Um, so, so, so we're able to do that, but then if you look domestically, we just won a large deal domestically that is a 1700 site, uh, SD-WAN deal, um, which is, it, it's a, it's a company called Captivate 
Uh, they do marketing in buildings, in elevators, and in lobbies of buildings, tier one buildings through all North America. Um, and they were looking to, how do we make sure that the video that we're showing, because we're, we're paid advertising, has the quality that we need to do? So, you know, we went with a broadband and a wireless application in, in, in one of the Velo boxes for, for SD-WAN and stood that up. So we're in the second phase of installing that right now. But that was a 1700 site deal that we just did and being installed right now. And in fact, we just did a press release on that about a week ago. I, I mean, for the partners listening home, I hope you catch just how unique and crazy that solution is. So we're talking about delivering video to elevators. And many of us, especially that have been either live in or visited big cities, you see that stuff all the time. But you maybe not stop to think about how that gets delivered and where the application is. And GTT came through with an SD-WAN solution, obviously auto failover, making sure that they've got good quality, active, active connections for something as simple as a video terminal in an elevator. That is a wicked cool scenario. It, uh, it really is, yeah, yeah. With it being kind of wicked cool and next gen, I'm going to ask another. This was not on our pre uh, pre game uh, questions that I always uh, prep my guests with, but with with where GTT has come from, you know, over the last ten years, you mentioned the thirty plus acquisitions that you've done. You've obviously evolved in from being just bandwidth to being a, a global SD WAN uh, and some UCAS in there too, uh, provider uh, to companies all over the world. Where do you go from here? You know, what's, what's the next five, five, 10 years look like for GTT? Is it more acquisitions? Is it continue, uh, continue to spread globally? What do you think is going to happen? I think we're going to go deeper, wider globally. Um, I, I, we will probably do more acquisitions. I think we're probably not going to do a little acquisitions for a little while now, but um, you probably saw an announcement not, not too long ago. It's been, and it's been public. We're spinning off some of our infrastructure, uh, companies that were that that are no longer part of our core through the acquisition so you start putting some of those assets together that really are not part of your core business and we're spinning those off today so my guess is we will do more acquisitions as we try and fill it in but right now you know being a tier one isp and having a global network how do we just start adding more customers on i think that the next three to five years is still going to be the sd wan uh, wave um you know a year and a half ago, people were just kind of talking about SD WAN. They're now signing contracts. We're not implementing. We've got great references, and it's and it's cross. It's retail. It's manufacturing. It's banking, finance. You know, marketing with Captivate. Um, it's across almost every type of a business unit. And then it's and it's not just um, it's not just price or cost that's driving it. It's just a better WAN technology with SD WAN. It gives you active active instead of active standby. So it's, it's definitely a better mousetrap. And I think that's going to be the next, you know, three to five years. And, and then we'll see what, what comes about that. But I think, you know, you had said before that, you know, what else, you know, what else really drives us is that we grew up as an aggregator. So we have all these aggregator, you know, deals that we have out there. So if a customer comes to us and says, hey, I have 1,700 sites that I want to do globally, but I need diversity. I need the main circuit to be on, on one network and, and another network. We can do all that. So you can go to one provider that can put all that together, wrap it into an SD-WAN deployment, have it as a managed service and give diversity and give everything that the customer needs. So it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. It, tr it truly is. As you look at the different providers that are out there, and everyone has you know, their niche and we're in, the, in their sweet spot. But the one thing that I, I want our CNSG family to realize about GTT in its current state is uh, not only are they a global aggregator, not only do they have access to all those network components, not only do they have 600 POPs plus just domestically, not counting the worldwide I, worldwide pieces. But I'd like to key in, you know, they mentioned a, an SD win win of 1,700 sites. Uh, as you've heard me talk in some of my videos online, as well as uh, in these previous uh, Zooms, it's so critically important when you're selecting that SD WAN provider to find someone that has experience with it. You know, if, if the provider you're choosing has 100 locations installed, which might be great for their size, uh, that doesn't mean that they've seen all the issues. And I guarantee you, GTT, with thousands upon thousands of installed endpoints, they've seen it all, they've done it all to steal from State Farm. Uh, but uh, it, that's incredibly critical. So if you've got one of those multi-location customers that's looking for someone that can literally pull references for SD-WAN and can tie it all together, uh, GTT sounds like a very, very good option, one that's taking care of a lot of our great uh, CNSG partners today. Uh, Rob, kind of finishing this up, Ty Bowen it for us. You know, we uh, 
uh, hopefully some of our partners here are wanting to get engaged with you. What's the best way for a CNSG partner to get, in, get working with GTT today? So we have 30 channel managers around the country today. So, you know, we are in all the local markets, whether that's Dallas, Chicago, New York, Boston, California, um, you know, LA, we're, we're all over. Um, so the best way to go is, is probably to, you know, contact CNSG and, and then uh, we can get you to the right channel manager, the right vice president. And, and I think one of our claims to fame is that we win probably 65 to 70% of our deals when we actually can sit at the table with the customer and talk about the network, talk about what you're trying to accomplish because we win a high majority of those deals. And most of our sub agents that we deal with today will actually bring us in and kind of consult with their customer because we're selling a solution. So if you, if you, if you want somebody that can sit down with you and help you win these deals and bring in all the right resources, you know, that's where we fit really well. Fantastic. Well, Rob, thank you so very much for being our guest this week on the Zoom. Uh, to all of us, all of our audience listening at home and watching this on YouTube, uh, we'll be back next time with another thought leader in the channel today on the Zoom.